What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Cage My IQ. As always, I am your host, D Hit Cage. Uh, this is going to be the Bellator 279 four card breakdown. As always, as you see down below, we are sponsored by High Tie Herbal. If you don't know who High Tie Herbal is, check out this video right now. Offering high quality, sustainable products with all natural, lab tested ingredients, it's High Tide Herbal's mission to help others live the longest, healthiest, and most productive lives possible. Their hemp derived CBD products have a wide variety of uses, from helping sore muscles to skin hydration and minimizing skin irritation. They generate results based on your specific needs. Elevate your lifestyle with the new wave of wellness. Visit HighTideHerbal.com to learn more. Once again, that's High Tide Herbal. All you got to do is go to HighTideHerbal.com, put in the promo code at checkout, CageMyQ10, to receive 10% off your next purchase. Of course, this is Cage My IQ, the, the, the best place for MMA content. If you could do us a favor, please hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. And please smash the like button and hit us up in the comment section to the right and let us know what you think of this upcoming uh, Belter card on Saturday. And please let us know who you like it, to win on this main card. But other than that, let's get started with the action right here. We got 13 fights going on. This is the, the part two of Belter's uh, fight weekend in Honolulu, Hawaii at Neil S. Uh, Blaisdell Center. This is the, the two fight, uh, uh, two night uh, Belter uh, fight set for the for the military here. It's going to be headlined by Cyborg versus Arlene Blancal. For the women's featherweight championship, and then we got a couple uh bantamweight grand prix uh first round matchups here as well. But let's get started uh, with the prelims right here. As you see right there, we got a women's matchup between Sumiko and Naba going up against Brittany Piles here. Uh, you got Lady Samurai Sumiko and Naba who's coming in at three and oh, whereas Brittany Piles is coming in at three and four. Uh, Sumiko is 5-0 in her last five fights, uh, whereas Whitney is 3-2 uh, two, uh, in her last five fights. They train out of no affiliation and then Tech MMA and Fitness Academy Gym. If you look at the fans, 96% are back in Naba, where only 4% are back in Whitney Powell's. If you look right here, you got Submission. Right there, you got KO, 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 and then you got right there, decision, KO, lost by KO, decision, and decision. I'm going to lean towards, uh, in this matchup, I'm going to lean towards Sumiko and Naba in this one by second round knockout. She has really good uh, jiu-jitsu and striking, whereas Whitney Powell hasn't done too much, and with her jiu-jitsu and striking, and I'm just leaning towards the, the fighter with the more experience and better uh, record here. And she she has been winning a lot of fights inside the distance. She has three knockouts, one decision, and one submission. Whereas Whitney Powell has been knocked out a, a couple of times in the past couple uh, five fights. She does have a knockout, but her uh, other two wins are by a decision there. So she doesn't have uh, as much power and movement as Sumiko does. And Sumiko can challenge her in the clinch and challenge her with the movement. And that's why I'm leaning with Sumiko Anaba here by second round knockout. I think the first round is going to be more of a feel in the round, but then the second round, she's going to catch her and get that second round knockout. So in the opening fight, I got Sumiko Anaba by second round knockout. Moving on to the second fight on the card, we got Ryan Daylar Cruz going up against Jordan Winsky. This is going to take place at the lightweight division. You got I'm Gonna as the nickname for Jordan Winsky, and Ryan Daylar Cruz has no nickname. But Daylar Dela Cruz comes in at 12 and 8, 3 and 2 in his last five fights. He's coming out of Hawaii, so this is going to be a homecoming for him. Whereas Jordan Winsky is 11 and 3, 3 and 2 in his last five fights as well. And then he's fighting out Wisconsin. They train out 808 
Fight Factory and then Metz's Combat Club. If you look at the the fans, there ninety one percent are back in Winsky, whereas only nine percent are back in De La Cruz. If you look at the last five fights, lost by submission, won by KO, won by decision, won by decision, and I uh, lost by decision, and then won by decision, and then he got in his uh, debut, he lost uh, to decision, he won by decision, won by KO. Lost by KO and won by submission there. I'm going to lean towards Jordan Winsky by a, a second round submission here. I feel like his uh, grappling and jiu-jitsu background is going to be a little bit better than Dela Cruz. Del Cruz is going to come out here looking to have a good show with the with the crowd. He's going to look to uh, knock out Winsky. But I think Winsky is going to come in with a game plan to get a fight along the cage. Uh, keep it away from the open uh, concept, and then eventually he's going to wear out De La Cruz and get that uh, sub via guillotine choke. I think he gets it, and I think he gets it done in round two. So this one, I got Jordan Winsky by round two guillotine submission. Moving on to the next fight on the card, we got Janae Harden going up against Diana Silva here. This is going to be taking place at featherweight. You got Hol- Hollow. Point, who's coming in at six and five? She is three and two in the last five fights. Whereas her uh, Diana Silva is coming in at nine and seven, two and three in her last five fights. They train now Tiger Muay Thai, and then Payhor uh, Jim. Of course, in this one, not eighty-seven percent are back in Harding, to where thirteen percent are only back in Silva. Silva has heavy hands. And she's coming in with the jiu-jitsu and uh, boxing background, whereas uh, Janae Harden is coming in with the Muay Thai and the the jiu-jitsu background. I like Janae Harden in this one, as you see right there. She lost by submission, won by decision, lost by KO, won by decision, and won by uh, KO stoppage against Sunit Kavanaugh. That's a big win there. Keep in mind, whereas Diana Silva lost by KO, lost by decision, won by decision, lost by decision, and won by decision. So she hasn't gone, uh, went inside the distance and joining Belter. She's had a struggle here. Whereas Janae Harden's been 50 50 in uh, Belter right now. She does have the big win against Sineb, and then she lost in a last fight uh, to Leah McCourt. Uh, which was was a, a one-sided uh, fight there. But going in here, I think that uh, Janae Harden's going to win by decision here. She's going to use that distance uh, game to throw those leg kicks, to throw those strikes, and avoid those power shots by Diana Silva. She's going to move around a lot, uh, do a lot of point fighting, and then clinch up when she has to. Diana Silva's going to be very dangerous if she can get that those hands close to Harden, and that's why you're going to see movement by Harden. But I, I think Harden does more volume here. She avoids those big shots, and she gets the decision victory. So I got Janae Harden by a unanimous decision victory in this matchup. Moving on to the next fighter. Uh, a fight on the card. We got Randy Field going up against Mariah Miller here in this matchup. It's going to be contested at catch weight, 120 pounds. Uh, Randy Rose City Phoenix Field is coming in at two and one, three and two in her last five fights. Of course, uh, she's two and one as a pro. And then you got Mariah Miller, who's one and one as a pro. But she's two and three in her last five fights. They train our Mexican maximum train center gym at a millennia MMA gym. The consensus is 92% are back in Dior, whereas only 8% are back in Miller. I love uh, Randy Field in this matchup. She lost her uh, deb- her last fight in Sumiko Naba by arm, tri- arm triangle choke submission. She won by decision. KO, a decision, and lost by decision, whereas her opponent won, lost by submission. Orlando Galindo 
defeated uh, next one by decision, lost by decision, won by KO, and lost by KO. So she's lost uh, every every way in the past five fights. And I think that last matchup is going to be a learning experience for Randy Beard because it, it just happens that Sumiko is on the same card here. And she's talked about moving on up. Uh, and that's why this is going to be a catch weight because she's going to be uh, competing at a high level. And she said that her weight cut has been better uh, for her now that she's not cutting enough weight uh, so she can focus more on training. But she comes in here with that uh, Muay Thai and uh, Jiu-Jitsu background. Uh, she has heavy hands. Uh, she's looking to come in here and get that big-time victory. And I think she does it by decision here over Mariah Mill. There's nothing very really special I've seen from Miller. She's been caught a lot in, in fights, and then she's left herself open. And she has pretty decent uh, uh, striking, but that's about it, in, in my opinion. So I'm leaning with Randy Fear by a decision victory here. I think she puts in a lot of volume. She puts in a better performance than she did last fight against Sumiko, and she gets out with a victory via decision. Moving on to the next fight. On the card, we got... Keone Diggs versus Bobby King. This is going to be contested at the lightweight division. They're coming in. Keone 9-1, 4-1 in his last five fights, whereas Bobby King is coming in at 11-4. This is going to be an exciting matchup here. Fighting out of 808 Factory and then Koa Kingdom. So we've got another 808 fighter here. And 80% are back in Diggs, whereas 20% are only back in King. If you look right here, King has won by KO, lost by decision, won by decision, won by submission, and won by KO. So he has a little bit of power in his hands, whereas Diggs has won by decision, decision, submission, and submission, and then lost by decision to Danny Reichel. I'm going to lean towards Keone Diggs in this matchup here. Uh, I, I was thinking of going Bobby King a little bit because he has a, that power, but I'm going to go with Diggs here. I think he uses that jiu-jitsu and clinch game to uh, it, it frustrate at Bobby King to keep him from hitting those big shots on him. And then he eventually gets him down, and I got Keone Diggs winning by first-round submission. Via dar stroke, I think he gets him uh, with the with the choke, makes him submit, and he gets back in the wing column after the the his first loss, uh, which was to Daniel Reichel in the last fight that he had. But I think he gets the submission and he gets back and move moves to ten and one in his uh, career, and I think he does it very handily against Bobby Crean. So we got Keone Diggs first round submission. Moving on to the next fight, uh, we got uh, Yancey Medeiros versus Emmanuel Sanchez. Uh, this is a guy that a few fights ago made it to the semifinals of the Grand Prix in the featherweight division and then uh, lost to uh, Pitbull and has been fallen since then. But uh, you got Yancey Medeiros, who's coming in at 15 and 8. He is 1 and 4 in his last five fights, whereas Emmanuel. El Matador Sanchez is coming in 20 and 7, 2 and 3 in his last five fights, as you see right there. They train our team Hakalia uh, and Rufus Sport MMA Academy. So you got Yancey Medeiros, who's uh, coming back to Hawaii uh, to, to take this fight. And of course, the fans are 80, 76% back in Sanchez, whereas only 24 are back in Madero. So this is going to be a classic uh, fight uh, where you got a, a striker uh, uh, wrestler in uh, Madero who lost by decision, decision, KO, KO, and won by KO in UFC. Uh, so he's making his debut in Belter, whereas Emmanuel Sanchez, who is a jiu-jitsu and uh, Muay Thai striker, he's coming in with losses to Kennedy. Mads Brunel by decision, and then the submission lost to Pitbull, and then before that he had the decision, and then it, it, right before that uh, he had a win right there, 
which was very a good win in that to uh, his opponent right there. But uh, I like this matchup for Manuel Sanchez. Uh, he, he has that very tall frame. He uses those leg kicks to the advantage. He likes to keep the distance. He likes to get in, get out with the striking and leg kicks. Whereas Madero's it likes to get in, get in your face and strike and then try and knock you out uh, with his hands. He has good movement and good uh, combo striking. But I, I just like this uh, Amino Sanchez by um, second round submission here via Randy Kachok. I think he's going to use the length to point fight with the legs and the long jab. I think he's going to just throw the jab a lot, throw the leg kicks, and then – in the second round, he's going to grapple with them. I think he's going to push him up against the cage, get him down, and then eventually get him to tap out by a rare naked choke. So in this one, I got Emmanuel Sanchez getting back in the wing column and to see if he can start making a, another move to, to the top of the division to get another title shot in the future. But he starts with the Yancey Madero's with a second round submission via rare naked choke. Moving on to the next fight on the card, we got the Gote Yamiuchi going up against Levon Kokel. Uh, this is going to be taking place at Welterweight. You got Gote, who comes in at 26 and 5, 4 and 1 in his last five fights, whereas Levon Kokel is coming in at 10 and 1, 3 1 and 1 in his last five fights. They fight out of Brazil and Georgia. And you got Yamuchi, Team Jim. And then you got Team Yepiskisani, uh, Jim. And, and then uh, the fans are leaning towards 87% towards Yamuchi to 13% of Kokeli. I'm leaning towards uh, Gote Yamaguchi by first round knockout here. He has a, a great combination of power striking and uh, clinch game. He likes to throw those long uh, combinations. He uses the leg kicks to set up the the punches. Uh, this is a guy that packs a punch with real power. As you see right there, with Kaka, he, he is won by decision, lost. Uh, he drew uh, with, by Dr. Stoppage. He won and won. So he has a little bit of power there. Uh, but And then he's coming from uh, Georgia, so you know he's going to – use that frame of his he's coming in taller with the uh, similar reach so he's going to use that height a little bit but i don't think he's going to be able to keep Godet from getting inside i think Godet gets inside lands one of those knockout punches on him and finishes Levon kakelli in the first round via overhand knockout so i'm going gote yamiuchi first round knockout Moving on to the next fight on the prelims, we got Kai Kamaka the third uh, going up against Justin uh, Gonzalez. Here, uh, this match is going to be contested at featherweight, uh, but you got Kai the f- f- fighting Hawaiian Kamaka the third. He's coming in at nine and four, two one and two in his last five fights, whereas Justin J Train Gonzalez is coming in at. 12 and 1, 4 and 1 in his last five fights. They train out of 8 or 8 Fight Factory and Top Notch MMA. You got, of course, you got Kai Kamaka, who's making his uh, comeback to Pearl City, Hawaii. And that's where he's from. That's where the Coopers are from. Ray Cooper, the third of PFL, is his cousin. Uh, they train out of Hawaii. And then that's where they're from, of course. But uh, you got 57% are leaning towards Kai Kamarka in, in the fan in the fandom, and 43 are leaning towards Gonzalez. This is going to be a very close fight here because uh, you got Kai Kamarka who won by decision, lost by decision, um, it drew it drew uh, um, it d- to decision with uh, Danny Chavez, lost by decision, lost by KO, and then won by decision. But then you got Gonzalez, who lost to Aaron Pico, and then won by decision, KO, decision, and KO. So this is going to be very tough. And I'm going to lean towards uh, Kai Kamarki here by decision here. I think he's going to be motivated 
to get this win. He's very good in the clinch. He has that grappling background. He has the striking, the boxing. And I think he's going to use the combination to clinch up. Uh, Gonzalez up against the cage, throw those strikes, uh, bend off, throw some good leg kicks. Justin Gonzalez is going to look to uh, point fight him and try and get that knockout. But I think Kai Kamarka avoids it, puts in enough volume, and get, ekes out the decision victory. This could be a split decision here, I think, because I think it's going to be close. And I think Gonzalez is going to be able to hit Kamaka with a couple good uh, blows that, uh, that Kamaka is going to definitely feel. But I think Kamaka is going to be able to re- recover from it, and keep going, and then pick up that split decision victory over Justin J. Train Gonzalez. Moving on to the next fight, we got uh, the last fight of the prelims. We got Lance Gibson Jr. versus Nanoa Dong. On this one, Lance Gibson Jr. is 5 0, whereas Nanoa Dong is coming in at 4 2. He got Fearless Gibson Jr., he is 5 0 in his last five fights. Whereas the baby faced assassin is three and two in his last five fights. Uh, you got British Columbia, and then you got uh, Makala Hawaii. That uh, no Dung is going to be another Hawaiian uh, fighting on the card. They train out Gibson MMA and then Hard Knocks 365. You got 95% lean towards Gibson Jr., and then 5% towards Dung. This is going to be a crazy matchup here. Uh, first, you got No Dong. In his last five fights, he won by decision, lost by KO, lost by decision, won by decision, and then won by KO. So he has a little bit of power and movement on his side. But then you got submission, KO, KO, decision, and KO. Uh, you got Lance Skipson Jr. He has that. Uh, kickboxing background. You got the jiu-jitsu on his background, of course. His father was a fighter, and his stepmother is Joria Budd, who fights in PFL, and she trains in kickboxing, Muay Thai, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So he has a little bit of that background on him. I, I'm leaning towards Lance Gibson Jr. by uh, second-round knockout here. I feel like he has the skills, the movement, he has uh, he's a little bit smaller, but he has the speed on his side. I think he's gonna touch up uh, Dung. I think he's gonna use all those skills and movement, and I think he squeaks out that second round knockout on Dung. Dung's gonna be a good challenge. He's gonna be able to uh, uh, throw those bombs at Gibson, and it's just gonna be if Gibson can deal with them or not. But I like Gibson to withstand those. Uh, those He's going to rack up the volume in the second round. I, I feel like he's going to get in there, hit him with the jab, and then hit him with the overhand shot. That's going to put the Noah Dong on the ground. So Lance Gibson Jr., second round knockout. Moving on to the main card here. The first fight we have is uh, uh, Alima Lay McFarlane making her uh, – uh, to, uh, her comeback to Hawaii. You got her nickname is the Eliminator. She's going up against Justine Kish, and they're going to be competing at flyweight, of course, as you see right, right there. Lima Lima Lay McFarlane is coming in eleven and one, four and one in her four and one four and one in her last five fights. Sorry about that. And then you got Kish, who is seven and five, one and four in their last five fights. They train out of Team Hurricane Awesome and then Jim O. The fans are 97% towards McFarlane, whereas only 3% are leaning towards Kish. Kish does have a good background for this fight. Uh, she has, uh, of course, Muay Thai uh, kickbox, and then she also uh, trains in a couple of other things, uh, whereas, whereas, Alima Lay McFarlane has a high level jiu jitsu background where she trains, uh, where she used to train, of course, with Liz uh, uh, Carmuch, who is uh, playing on Friday in the main event, uh, of course, against Adriana Velasquez. So she has a high level jiu jitsu background and then she has the ever grown striking background as well. You look at Kish, uh, lost by decision, won by decision, lost by sub. 
decision and decision. So that sub loss to Mazer is going to loom large in this fight. And then you got uh, McFarlane who won by sub, sub, KO, then decision. And then, of course, she lost the championship to Driana Velasquez in her last fight uh, that she competed in a year ago. So she's looking to make that comeback to get that rematch at some point in the future. And I think she gets a first round sub here uh, via rare naked choke. I think Kish is going to be the better striker, but I think McFarlane's going to be able to get in close, get the fight down. Uh, she has pretty decent hands that have been developing. So she's going to use the hands, get into to entry points. And then once she gets the entry point to go for the takedown or, or clinch up, she's going to use the body lock to take down Kish. And then eventually she's going to use that high level jujitsu to take the back of Kish and get that first round submission here. A majority of her wins are by submission. She just knows how to gain that entryway and get her opponent to tap. She's going to get back in the win column. And, and I got Alima Lane McFarlane getting that hometown victory by first round sub via rear naked choke. Moving on to the next fight on the main card, we got a, a Bantamweight Grand Prix first round matchup between Kyoji Horiguchi going up against Patchy Mix. This is going to be a highly entertaining fight on the card. You got Kyoji, who's 29 and 4, 3 and 2 in his last five fights. As you know, he lost that uh, fight uh, for the title against Sergio Pettis, where Pettis came from behind to get that uh, that KO big victory with that back backhanded fist. Uh, then you got Patchy No Love Mix, who's 15 and 1, 4 and 1 in his last five fights. As you see right there, they train out. American top team, and then Jackson Wink MMA and WNI WNY MMA and Fitness Gym, and of course, seventy nine percent are leaning towards Horiguchi, whereas twenty one are leaning towards Mix. Uh, this is a classic striker versus grappler here, as you see right there. Kyoji Horiguchi has that big time movement striking background. He 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 knows how to go for five rounds. He was a uh, big-time champion in Ryzen. He has beaten a lot of guys in Belter. Uh, he's beaten uh, Darren Caldwell a few times. As you see, he lost, to, of course, uh, right there. He lost to Pettis. He beat Kai Asakura by KO, and then, of course, lost to him by KO. He beat uh, Caldwell by decision and Ben Wynn by KO, whereas you got Patchy, who won by sub, sub, he lost to Archuleta, who we're going to talk about in the next fight by decision. He won by sub, and then he won by sub yet again. So you got you got Patchy Mix, who's a wrestler and a jiu-jitsu artist who's looking to get the fight to the ground and get that sub uh, submission or decision victory. And then you got Kyoji, who's looking to use the speed, Use the quick combinations and strike him between his legs and beat. And he's looking for the knockout here. That's what he's looking for. So it's whoever gets their uh, fight, yeah, it, it going in their own way. It's gonna it's gonna be uh, tough to to uh, to watch this because the the two guys with contrasting styles. But in this one, I'm gonna lean towards Kyoji or Horiguchi. I thought. The fight he fought against Sergio Pettis was near perfect until he, of course, got knocked out. He just out-volumed and out-matched uh, Sergio Pettis. Pettis was just so confused about the volume that was getting used on him. Those leg kicks were vicious. He has cardio for Ds. And as long as he stuffs those takedowns by Apache Mix, it should be in his uh, uh, corner because Apache Mix's striking has been if he had best it's it's proven but majority of his game is predicated on the takedowns ground and pound and the submission entries but i got kyoji horiguchi by second round knockout and which is going to advance him into the next round of the belter bantamweight grand prix over apache mix moving on 
to the next fight, which is the co-main event evening, and it's going to be for the uh, interim Bantamweight Championship. Originally, this was supposed to be Rafi and Stotts versus Sergio Pettis, but then Sergio Pettis uh, got injured. He tore his ACL, uh, and then now he's out six to nine months. Uh, So he had to bail out of the tournament. So they moved it around and added a couple wild card matchups, which are going to be on uh, the the night before his card. So they put Juan Archuleta in this matchup. It's going to be for the interim title. So one of these guys is going to have to defend the title until he loses in this tournament. But you got Juan Archuleta going up against Hoppy and Stotts. What a matchup here uh, right now. Of course, that Bantamweight. You got Archuleta, the Spaniard, who is 25 and 3, 3 and 2 in his last five fights. Whereas Hoppy and Supa Stotts, he's 17 and 1, 5 and 0 in his last five fights. Uh, you got a new affiliation here. And then you got Rufus Sport MMA Academy. You got the fans. They'll lean towards 84% towards Stotts, especially with him being the underdog, uh, the, the favorite. And then it's crazy to think that Archuleta, after losing the title, is going to be the underdog. But you got Archuleta, who lost to Pettis 10 months ago. He defeated Apache Mix. He defeated Henry Corrales. He lost to Patricio Pitbull. And then he beat uh, Eduardo Dantas by KO. But this is going to be the uh, basically a striker versus grappler matchup. Once again, Juan Archuleta is a point fighter. He has great movement. He's very quickly. He, ha- he has five round cardio. He's used to fighting five rounds. He's done several of them, of course, being the former champion here. He tries to rack up the volume. He just quick hands and quick combinations. But then you got Hoffy and Stotts, who has ever improving striking. He showcased that in the past couple of fights. But then he has that high level jiu jitsu and wrestling background, being from a wrestler in high school and college. And it's going to be a nice combatant here. I'm going to lean towards uh, Hoffy and Stotts here to get the uh, the the upset here. I know he's the favorite, but I still consider it a, a upset because I feel like he's going to be able to take down Archuleta several times. Archuleta's coming in. His last fight was uh, the loss to Pettis, so we don't know what to expect from him here. He could come in here and with and go on a revenge tour to try and win the tournament and get that rematch versus Pettis because Pettis. Uh, snuck out that uh, victory over him uh, for the title. Or he could come in here and just not look the same. He could look rusty, have not fought in a, in a, a year, whereas Hoppy and Stotts has fought one or two times since then. And I could just see him uh, clinching up Archuleta, uh, getting him down, uh, using the wrestling to do a lot of the ground and pound, control him on the mat, and win by a unanimous decision victory in this matchup. I think it's going to be very close. I think there's going to be a couple rounds where Archuleta does get the striking going and pulls out a couple rounds just due to his striking and not getting uh, taken to the ground. But I think Hoppy and Stotts takes this three rounds to two and advances to the next round of the Bantamweight tournament, and and he's going to have the interim title with them to go with it. So with this, I got Hoppy and Stotts winning by a unanimous decision victory, three rounds to two. Moving on to the main event of the evening here. We got the women's featherweight championship matchup between Chris Cyborg versus Arlene Blankow. This is the rematch. Uh, they fought earlier where Blankow was subbed by uh Cyborg, which is something we don't see, but we got Cyborg coming in 25 and 2, 5 and 0 in our last five fights. Where you got Arlene Anger Fist Blankow, who comes in at 15 and 8, 4 and 1 in our last five fights. Uh, they train out Shoot Box Long Beach and then Allegiance Combat and Fitness Center. You got the fans lean 97% towards Blank, yep, towards uh, Cyborg. Whereas only 3% are leaning towards Blankow. 
And then in this one, of course, we knew Cyborg. She has a really good uh, grappling, but her mainstay is that uh, power striking, and where she. But of late, she showcased her cardio, where she's been able to go long uh, and just th throw those bombs at people. Uh, uh, but as she, she's been knocking people out left and right, as you see right there, she knocked out Sunni Kavanaugh really quickly, and then she. Uh, to, to be Leslie Smith uh, by ground and pound late in that fifth round. She subbed Arlene Blancow, of course. She KO'd Julia Budd, and then she defeated Felicia Spencer by decision in a fight that offense Spencer uh, was actually competitive against her, whereas Blancow uh, defeated Sorensen by decision, Diana Silva by KO. She lost by sub. She then... Before that, one and then one by KO and then decision. So the common opponent is Lazy Smith, which they both won, won, won against. I think it's going to be the same situation here. I think Arlene Blancow is going to come in here, and she's going to be able to have the speed and the, and the quickness on her side. She's going to clinch up with Cyborg. Is the only way you can kind of combat Cyborg is to clinch her up and then throw strikes within the clinch. So I, I could see her throwing elbows and knees in that clinch and try and slow her down by damage. But I just think that power is going to be too much uh, for her. And I, I'm going to go with Chris Cyborg uh, by second round knockout. I think she comes close in the first round, but doesn't get it. I, I, and then in the second round, I think she goes in there and just bum rushes Blank off the start. And then she knocks her out here. Uh, a part of me feels like only blank cow could come in here and take this fight to this decision. I wouldn't be surprised to see that because she's tough. And as long as she avoids that submission again, because she's going to come in with a great game plan, she might be able to, uh, to take this to decision, but more than likely lose because we did see against Leslie Smith, how Chris Cyborg can pour in a lot of volume in a five round fight. She had over a hundred strikes in that fight. And then she could have done more if she wanted to, but I got Cyborg knocking her out in the second round and getting that, uh, that uh, win via KO to defend her title. And then we're going to have to wait for Cyborg and Kat Singer to actually happen in the future so once again in the main event i got chris cyborg winning by second round knockout that wrap things up with the the belter 279 uh, uh four card breakdown by yours truly cage one of my uh, i got two uh bets that i'm looking at for this card right now uh that i'm leaning towards the first one is i i'm leaning towards only Lance Gibson Jr. I really like his chances here. Uh, betting wise, I'm going to go with the money line there. And another one that I'm liking is a Janae Harden there. I like her as well. I mean, I'm going to go with decision or I might go with knockout here. It depends. I have to see how the uh, the odds are and then how the, the weigh-ins go with these two. But other than that, That'll wrap things up with uh, today's uh, breakdown. I will be back in a couple weeks to, for, to do Belter 280, which is going to take place in Paris, France. But other than that, just get another shout out to our sponsor down below, High Tide Herbal. Use promo code CASEMIQ10 at checkout to receive 10% off your next purchase. And then once again, if you haven't done so already, If you could, please hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell. And then hit the smash the like button and just to do us a favor. And then hit us up in the comment section and so we can get the, the talk going on Belter 279 in the comment section. But other than that, I'm your host, Cage, and I will talk to you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in.